Now, intermittent fasting works really well for some people when it's done right. If you struggle to lose on intermittent fasting, however, I'm gonna discuss the top eight mistakes that people make that prevents them from losing enough weight. Unlike those extra pounds, you don't wanna miss this. If it's your first time here, I'm Dr. Madge. Consider subscribing to this channel for up-to-date medical topics and headlines. So first of all, our weight loss rate will vary from person to person, so not all of our metabolisms are created equal, unfortunately, and some of us may lose weight much faster than others. For instance, I've seen men generally lose weight more quickly than women, that darn estrogen. So make sure your expectations are realistic because you may not lose 10 pounds a day like your husband does. Okay, yeah, no, no, that would be extreme. Now overall, I'd set a goal to lose about one or two pounds a week because generally those who lose the weight more gradually are more apt to keep it off. Like I always tell my patients, slow and steady wins the race. Now with that said, here are some of the most common intermittent fasting mistakes. Mistake number one, you have an underlying medical condition that may be impairing weight loss, such as undiagnosed thyroid disorder or untreated diabetes, or perhaps you're on a medication that may be impairing you from losing weight and actually may cause weight gain. See my prior video on top causes of unintended weight gain that I'll place a link for this in my description down below. Make sure you've been screened for some of these things by your doctor. Mistake number two, you're overeating during your window. So like for a 16-8 schedule, which is the most popular version, I often suggest two well-balanced meals during that window. That means to still try to maintain appropriate size portions of your meals too. I'll place a link in the description for a handy website that provides you with some visual guidelines as to what proper portions should be for a typical adult. Mistake number three, you're not fasting long enough. Now I'd set a 16 hour fasting goal in order to speed up the weight loss. But remember that it's not just that you're skipping a meal a day to lose weight per se, but that you're actually keeping the pancreas quiet by inhibiting insulin release during the fasting window. So it's important that you're striving for a long enough fasting window. Now with that said, it really is okay to start at 12 hours for instance and then gradually increase that window through time if you find it a challenge to complete 16 hours on the first day. But make sure you're counting those hours and not just like guesstimating. However, note that if you do gradually increase the number of hours through time in order to reach the 16 hours, then it may take a little longer to start shedding the pounds, which is also completely okay. I mean, it's a work in progress. In addition, if selecting a 16-8 schedule, we typically maintain this for seven days a week. So if you're opting for a 24 hour, which is one meal a day, or 36 hours, which is zero, meals on one day, then consider doing that only two to three times a week and not every day. But a 16-8 should be done every day. Also note that some people start shedding the pounds sooner than others. Like some people start losing on week one and I've seen others take like four to six weeks in order to start losing. The longer that you've been overweight and the more insulin resistance you have, the longer it may take to start losing and keeping that pancreas quiet. Mistake number four, your carb intake is excessive. I mean, although you don't necessarily need to restrict your carb intake as in other diets such as keto, I mean, we know that. In order to speed up weight loss though, you wanna still try to keep your carb levels reasonable. So those with insulin resistant conditions such as prediabetes, diabetes, PCOS, or fatty liver, these people are especially sensitive to carbs and may require lower carb consumption than the average person. Consuming plates of pasta or rice will slow down your efforts. In general, you wanna to try to limit your processed white flour and starches such as bread, tortillas, rice, pasta, you wanna to try to opt to obtain your carbs from whole foods, such as vegetables instead. Mistake number five, you're snacking. Have you noticed that most snacks are processed? If it comes in a package or if it has a food label on it, then it is processed and thereby an unnecessary source of calories. So I'd encourage you to maintain two well-balanced meals without snacking, but if you must snack, then opt for fresh veggies, handful of nuts or seeds, or like a slice of avocado with nothing but the bagel seasoning. Yum, that stuff is really good, by the way, if you haven't tried it. 
Mistake number six, you are overindulging in desserts and sweets. Now, it's okay to reward yourself for all of your efforts, perhaps like once a week with a dessert of your choice if you have a sweet tooth, but more frequent sweets may mitigate your weight loss efforts. Mistake number seven, your liquids contain carbs. Now you'd be surprised at how the liquids that we consume have a sneaky way of adding unnecessary calories and carbs to your diet. Always check out the food labels and avoid drinks with carbs such as, let's say, coffee and tea drinks with sugar, sodas, Gatorade, that's a big one, uh, lemonade, juices, yes, even if it's homemade. It's still sugar and it's still calories. Opt for water or like sparkling water and or like black tea or coffee without anything added. Also limit alcohol, which is also carb rich. Red wine is best, but no more than one to two drinks per day. Although none, of course, is best. And last but not least, mistake number eight. You are less physically active. A decrease in physical activity can slow down the metabolism. Note that although our diet does play in general a larger role in weight loss, exercise is still important and in and of itself has been shown to improve insulin resistance even if there is no weight loss. So strive for at least 30 minutes of continuous cardiovascular exercise on most days of the week where you break a sweat and your heart rate is increased, not just like a stroll in the mall, sorry such as brisk walking or aerobics or dancing or swimming. And there you have it, the top eight intermittent fasting mistakes that I've seen patients make. Note that intermittent fasting is really a lifestyle and not a diet per se. It's truly like a way of life and it can be progressively improved through time. It doesn't have to be like an overnight, like magical like schedule that you have to adhere to. Initially work on achieving the number of fasting hours, and then gradually implement healthy eating habits along the way. I've seen patients reverse their prediabetes and their fatty liver through intermittent fasting and have been excited to even discontinue medications for diabetics through time on intermittent fasting. Although it may not be right for everyone, there are numerous benefits shown in studies so far about intermittent fasting, and I think it's a worthwhile effort for many people who are seeking just a healthier lifestyle and weight loss. Now, have you tried intermittent fasting? If so, what has been your experience? How long did you take to start losing weight and how much have you lost? Please feel free to share it with us in the comments below so, so that we can help each other as a community. Now, if you found this information valuable, which is always my goal, please give it a like, hit that red subscribe button along with that notification bell next to it so that you don't miss any of my future videos. And please feel free to share it with someone else who may find it useful. Well, thanks for tuning in. Good luck on your weight loss efforts and I'll see you next time.